honestly let me tell you the truth eh i didn't just cry i really did not just cry i wept <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, nice to meet you. My name is CJ. If you are not new, hey babes, welcome back. So, from the title, you can already tell this video is a story time. This is a true story, something that happened to me sometime last year, and it's embarrassing actually. It's embarrassing that I have to share this, but um, I just think it's like something um, you should learn from because there are actually certain things that I felt like you can actually learn from their points that i will make at the end of the story there's actually a reason why i'm telling this story that's basically what i'm trying to say so sometime last year i um i think like well, let's just give it like seven eight seven eight months back or maybe even more i went out on a date i was coming back home there's something about abuja boat drivers once it's like four five six seven they are very picky about the kind of places they are going to and honestly i don't blame them because of like the insecurity and stuff but sometimes some of them just overdo it like if you are if you know abuja well some people just want to go within we'll say gariki central area if you're talking apo lokogoma you know mkaru kubwa is like big big far far places for them you know and um when i finished like my date i was going home i think it was around five six ish no it was like around seven to seven ish and i was like okay let me not even stress myself because i know that there's going to be traffic and <laughs> both drivers might not want to go and i was like you know what i'm just going to do like this along i will just enter like one along stop at like my junction and then i go home it will be you know easier at that time so i did along if you don't know what along is along is like taxi the lagos version of it is like down for those yellow buses but in abuja people tend to use like along along like taxi is basically what people use aside like boat and then maybe there's this, those big buses but honestly it's just taxis um so i took along before i entered i told the man that i have 500 naira because he told me that oh it's 200 naira i said okay no he said enter 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 I told him I have a friend there. He said, "Enter, enter, enter." You know, I don't know sometimes if they actually hear you, or they are just trying to get customers, like trying to get passengers inside their boat. So they totally ignore what you say till problems start. So I entered the taxi, and I, he said his um, his fare was two hundred naira to like my junction, and I said, "Cool." I have 500 naira so i entered the taxi there were like three people at the back of the seats were four because they literally sandwich you inside those taxis and you're four at the back and then there's one person or sometimes even two at the front seat so for that day there was just one person at the um, in the front seat and then there were, were four of us um during the course of the um the, the ride i got to know that that woman in the front seat was actually his wife so like i said it was like around 7 7 30 so let's just say while after the whole gra gra getting passenger blow 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 it was ready to eight and we're heading home so the first three guys i think they came together they dropped like um let's say 15 minutes before i was to come down and when they came down it was it 15 minutes let's say 15 minutes honestly i can't give like specific time because all this happened so fast to me that i'm even feeling like it's just one minute but they came down and then the driver told me to give him my five to give him my money so that i don't waste his time you so you know when you say oh yeah madam bring your money make you not waste my time i don't know how to speak pigeon so sorry <laughs> so sorry i don't want to butcher i don't want to come and embarrass myself on the streets of youtube but um you get what i'm saying so i gave him my 500 naira and the, he dropped the people and he kept on going he did not give me my change and i was like i didn't bother about it because i didn't think there was any problem at that time so i got to like i was getting close to my junction i was telling him reminding him that okay i'll soon drop and this guy you know he said okay but i told him please my change he didn't give me my change he didn't say anything and then i got to my junction and he told me that he doesn't have change i should come down from his car what look here eh? you can't make this up i literally got to my junction asked 
for my change that I had initially told you that I have 500 Naira and you are to give me 300 and I got to my junction and you're telling me you don't have change madam come down you know with like anger and you know it's already eight eight ish by this time and like it was dark like it was the express and I was like I'm not coming down if you don't give me my 300 Naira change because it's the audacity for me really you're not even pleading with me you're not telling me sorry or please or like and secondly you collected this money way way back before we got here so if you didn't have change why did you not say it then why didn't you look for change all through the journey why didn't you say it before i entered your car why do i have to get to my junction and i have to come down without collecting my 300 naira yeah so 300 naira is what caused all this problem i told the guy i was not coming down it was i play like this thing instead of like it was still doing me like film trick but i i really stood on the ground i was not going to come down from that car because he really had so much audacity like he had he was just like but i'm coming from my car i go drive out to oga give me my change it's as simple as that now come down and he did not want to give me my change he was shouting at me and i was insisting at this point i was already raising my voice i wasn't coming down till he gives me my change and immediately he drove off and this guy drove with speed at this point i actually started panicking i was screaming i was shouting like i was like ah. <laughs> relieving the moment in my head is still funny because i don't get how people think anyways back to what we're saying i was screaming i was shouting this 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 you know screaming because i was like where is this guy taking me to what is happening right now you know and he drove and then he stopped like um he just stopped let's say 10 minutes away from like where because he drove really fast maybe it's not 10 minutes maybe it's five minutes because I'm, I'm, I'm not really getting like the time um frame now because it just happened so fast to me so he just stopped like it was an it's an express so he just stopped by the way and then he he was he was speaking yoruba because as i was shouting in the car he was that's when i realized it was actually yoruba and he actually stammers and i'm not trying to you know stereotype people but i always heard that people that stammer are hot tempered so maybe it's just one out of many cases i don't know but i maybe when he said stammering i should have known that this is getting out of hand but the more he 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 was claiming anger the more i was aggravated you know i'm a lagos girl you can't come and tell me my eye is open i will share my eyes for you <laughs> so um we st he stopped the car immediately and he was speaking everybody was angry and then he nearly stopped the car he he came out of the driver's seat so let me explain to you um i'm literally at the back of the car and then there are two people in the front the woman and the man remember the woman has been mute all through this time and um i'm sitting down here inside the at the back so he comes down from the driver's seat and he goes like my eyes literally follow him as because i was like what i'm i'm panicking and then he comes down and then he turns and he comes to me as you know as he's turning i'm now when he gets to, to my right hand i'm literally facing him he opens the door and this guy slapped me boom this guy gave me one hot apara on my face like with his five fingers like his hand literally plastered on my face Woo! it's still so shocking to me because i was shocked i think shocked is actually an understatement i was livid i was angry i was upset i felt hot i felt hate i felt very hateful i was so so upset really because first of all as he gave me that slap i literally could not like i saw stars so basically his hand hit um my face but it affected more of my left um eye as he slaps me actually said dragging me from the from his car again he has not given me my change at this point <laughs> as he was dragging me out i came down the, my things were staying in the car so i was try i i was telling him not to touch me trying to bring down my things as i came out he closed the door and was trying to walk back to the driver's seat and immediately i started swearing now this is something i really 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 don't like i i like it was something i actually regretted i don't think that um whatever the case you shouldn't open your mouth to swear and actually say swearing you know typical 
swear not like you're mad or you're stupid <laughs> just basically you know when you're cursing from a hateful part of your spirit and soul you know there's certain things that you don't want your tongue to say or you should never allow your your mouth because your tongue is very very i wouldn't say powerful don't just say certain things so i actually said saying it and that was when the woman in question now stay reacting basically i was saying you say back to sender back to sender back to sender um hmm. so it was at that point the lady now said telling him he should give me my change and let them go and then let me now tell you the most surprising thing about this entire story as i was you know when tears were rolling down my cheeks and i was cursing like i was i don't know <laughs> i was <laughs> i was in a very very dark um spot at that time as i was doing that i was when i noticed that the woman was actually talking she was telling him to give me my change and came down from his driver's seat again came to me while sending everything i was saying to me back to sender the moment he was speaking over and he opened his wallet and he brought out the 300 naira change sitting pretty inside his wallet with other you know money i don't know but like he brought out the complete change and he threw it on the floor why 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 this drama really why this drama and like i was like what and it made me cry so so much. like honestly let me tell you the truth eh i didn't just cry i really did not just cry i wept i wept bitterly i was so so mad i was so upset i felt i felt every bit of bitter you know so i didn't pick the money i just started walking my way back um to my junction and into my street and into my house and when i got home i really cried i called my date told him okay see what happened um called my family called my friend okay i didn't think i don't think i called my friends till the next morning um so i was sad but without speaking to somebody it all came down to me that i made a mistake in saying those things and trying to like you know getting getting myself to that point of anger also i understood that i did not display wisdom you know we pray for this thing called wisdom but we sometimes do not actually exhibit it number one there are ten thousand and one things that probably would have happened to me that night it was simple it was just 300 naira really the moment i saw that this was dragging on I honestly should have just come down from the car and left. My life is much, much more worth than 300 naira. So, putting myself um, in a terrible situation was just uncalled for. There's certain things that once you see that a queen swang wabagogi, like you know, you're already getting one and now once again, you can tell this is not normal. Just let it go. Don't allow. Don't indulge yourself in that. Um, what's it called? In that back and forth conversation because it doesn't help anybody it doesn't help you it doesn't help the person and most importantly it, it escalates the whole situation i mean that was my own um situation so um yeah i'm sorry excuse the noise it's okay i forgot to say something Please. i said that i will always talk about this i know that i am not fully informed when it comes to politics the more information i get i will share here on my platform but Till election, I'm going to be using um, my platform to talk about um, PVC. I know, I get it. You, you, you think your vote doesn't count. Yes, I also think that sometimes. But I still think that it's still the right thing to do. Just do it and also exercise your right to vote by actually voting when the time comes. Don't just get the PVC. Use it, okay? And we just hope that things will be better not just hoping we have to start working towards making things better okay yeah okay now that we've gotten that out of the way back to our story that night i think i actually felt so much pain around like the left region of my face but aside that i think i was okay and then i slept and i woke up the next morning and hell broke loose i literally could not see with my left eye i actually felt like i was blind <laughs> i woke up with so much shock um at first for the first like few seconds like i couldn't see and then i now started trying to like stop panicking i got myself up and then i tried to like close you know when i do this i can see and then when i do this i can't really see with this eyes like blurry not just that like the wind the light any form of light 
was affecting and making my eye water it was so painful so i literally had to close um i had to close my windows i had to off all the lights i had to make my room as dark as possible and then i had to wear sunglasses inside the house so the main problem actually started the next day because my left eye was watery and um i couldn't see um i felt like is this it am i going to be blind now <laughs> Chuku, what did I do? God, please help your daughter. So I tried to go outside. I tried to step outside. But like I said, even wind, any form of like external um, thing, like wind, light, it just affects me. So I, I went back inside. So I had to call my neighbors and then they came. They gave me like, because I also had headache, they gave me pain reliever, um, paracetamol, and then tried to call um, a doctor that the ones they know. And they were like, oh, I see, I have to get myself down to the hospital and um get myself checked up like run a test and stuff so um i couldn't go that day because i was so i was freaking out and most importantly it was too painful it was so painful that i could not leave like even to go to my bedroom i would have to like use do like try to use my hands to feel things so that i don't just open the i don't just expose the eye to like light or air or anything at all so it was really bad and the next day i got an uber and i went to the hospital i ran some tests and they told me like oh eye pressure is high and that if you don't like control it but they said oh it's nothing too serious it's just eye trauma but you have to come in for checkup it actually prescribed some drugs eye drops and said use this for this amount of time if it gets worse or if it doesn't get better then there's a problem but for now um we think it's just the the trauma of the previous um, the previous the the previous night <laughs> that's the previous previous night <laughs> so um i and the, the man was trying to explain to me he said i don't want you to freak out but like um you have to come in and test like your eye pressure regularly because this is one of the reasons why people get glycoma i mean like, i don't know am i saying it right is it glycoma or glaucoma so he tried to explain to me like how severe it can get and how you know minor it can also be and gave me like some put my hopes high made me happy and told me to pray you know it was just a cool doctor i got home did everything that i was supposed to do just kept taking my drug drugs i didn't go out for so uh, i didn't go out actually I, you guys know i work from home so i had to do everything at home actually i couldn't work for the um first week because of phone um screen so i couldn't do anything i was just like it was like sick bed in my house i'm basically doing everything i can my my neighbors will come i think after two three weeks my eyes got better like i didn't experience any pain i could go out without sunglasses i could you know open my eyes to direct light open my eyes to natural light and i would be able to see and i'll be okay and i felt really happy i was so thankful so grateful i'm still so happy and so thankful for that um although one thing i do experience is like occasional pain in my left eye glory be to god everything is fine um i was sure i'm okay and yeah basically that's the story um what i did want to point out about from this story is number one learn to apply wisdom in certain situations wisdom is not by knowing book wisdom is being able to um discern where you should talk and where you should not talk basically so i think i did not actually apply wisdom in this situation because first of all the time when this was happening like the time frame was around eight nine and with the situation of the country this is not the time you should be arguing with somebody for change of 300 naira. just get out and move on like you can get angry for whoever but just get yourself to a safe space number one learn to apply wisdom in certain situations number two i will also say if you encourage an abuser and by encouraging abuse i mean if you have like a friend or a, um, a sister or um, an acquaintance who abuses people whether it's emotional verbal or physical abuse and you'd say absolute nothing you are an abuser yes cj said it if you enable abusers to do what they are doing without saying anything whatsoever you are an abuser because that lady was in the car with me when everything was going on and she literally kept mute she's not like she was sleeping she was awake but mind you know you're minding your business like that's minding your business to a particular fault like this is your husband your husband you even knew he had the change and they just i just feel like him going as far as beat like slapping me you could literally have said 
a word you know even if it, it may not even change the situation at all so i was talking to both of them expecting that she would say something and say maybe madam calm down or you know just say something and she did absolutely nothing until i actually started swearing before she opened her mouth so my basic the basic thing i'm trying to say i know it probably doesn't really relate but Honestly, it got me thinking that um, if you watch my Blood Sisters review, if you haven't seen that video, that video is going to be, the link is going to be on the screen, so make sure you watch it. It's actually very interesting. The movie really did speak on abusive relationships in um, a minute way, but what I'm just trying to say is there's a lot of domestic violence um, stories coming out here and there, and you can't tell me these people don't have sisters, brothers, friends, acquaintances, work um, co colleagues, church members, and all of that if you have someone that you know that is at least you have a speaking relationship with and you've never said anything whatsoever i'm not saying this is going to change the world but you see it and you mind your business mind your business mind your business yes mind your business is good but i think when someone especially when it's your friend self and you don't just say anything you're basically encouraging their behavior and i honestly think that makes you an abuser as well basically that is what i wanted to point out from this story i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give this video a big thumbs up um follow me on my socials my handles are on the screen and till i see you guys in my next video don't forget to tell a friend tell another friend tell somebody to do what to subscribe i'll see you guys next week bye